it's good to see that digital has evolved and it's no longer an afterthought, which it was for quite a few years. Now, pandemic or last 18 to 20 months, we've seen everywhere, hey, business has been slow. But well, that's the fact. But the another fact which we have seen, there has been a lot of activity on it. They've been at the surface of, of calm surface. We've seen certain uh, industry really lap it up and uh, grow. And we've seen that in digital space, especially in terms of digital content consumption, in whether it's video streaming or using digital for edutech. Uh, so there has been a growth in edutech and of course the e-commerce. The way e-commerce accelerated in last 18 months, which also made many businesses relook, rethink their strategy and also uh, redefine their strategy to have been all inclusive uh, to ensure the fulfillment happens. Uh, while this panel, uh, I am joined by uh, experts who have bring in a varied experience uh, and a rich experience and we'll be and uh, looking at and, and uh, they will be sharing. Uh, and as this panel is rightly uh, titled that we're looking at the rebirth and the growth drivers for the publisher. So joining me is the esteemed experts uh, uh, starting with Amit. Uh, Amit uh, uh, is from Densu, we have Prasad from HD Digital, Tanmay of course from Publicis and Sunil from Firework. Uh, Puneet couldn't make it because of some family emergency, so that's why you don't see him on the panel. But uh, to get started, uh, uh, I would request each and quickly give on a, a quick brief introduction about yourselves, uh, starting with you, Amit. Thanks, thanks, Vijay. Uh, I think a lot of introductions already been done. Uh, I, I had the Tensu Creative uh, Services, which includes uh, mainline agencies like Taproot, Tensu Impact, uh, Tensu Megari Bhavan, uh, which includes digital agencies like Tensu Web Chutney, Isobar, Word Consult, and uh, the PR agency, which is uh, Perfect Relations. So interesting times for us uh, when we are talking about digital. Just uh, gives me goosebumps because uh, honestly, that's been the the saving grace for the last couple of years. It's uh, it, it's it's kept us buoyant and kept us reinventing ourselves. Uh, I am from the advertising industry for as long as I remember. Uh, you know, for some reason, I started with research uh, way back, uh, and suddenly then I realized I'm not as smart uh, and moved into advertising and apps. Since then, I've stuck around here. So, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me here. Thanks, Amit. Uh, Prasad, hi. Hi. Uh, thanks for having me on this uh, panel. Uh, I had all content for uh, HD Media Group, as it were, digitally. And uh, I think over the last two years, what has happened is the pandemic has forced us to accelerate our digital transformation journey. I think we were all already on course. I think most publishers have just accelerated that journey and it's been uh, very exciting times for us purely in terms of business and uh, in terms of reinventing our processes uh, while of course we've had to deal with all the pressures that have emanated from the very very unusual circumstances and unforeseen circumstances during the pandemic so uh, it's this i mean this is a very interesting discussion and glad to be a part of this panel uh, thanks prasad hi tanmay <laughs> Thanks, Vijay. Uh, see, I lead uh, digital media and media services for publishers in India. That means brands like Zenith, Starcom, or Sip and Treasure Face, or uh, Growth of Epsilon in India. And I, or this is probably my 20th year in digital media, <laughs> specifically. And last five years I've been heading media agencies for publishers. Thanks, Tanmay. And Sunil. Uh, hi, I head the uh, Firework India business. Uh, we are a Silicon Valley based uh, startup which is providing uh, publishers, direct to commerce companies, uh, e commerce, the uh, opportunity of bringing short format and shoppable, swipeable videos and live stream uh, capabilities onto their own uh, and operated uh, uh, businesses. Uh, I've been on, on the video side for as long as I can remember, probably 15 years. 2006 is when uh, we started up with a small startup that got acquired eventually. Uh, and I have been on the video space and I've seen it evolve from the point where VCs would refuse to put money on video asking why would anyone in India watch video on a laptop to a lot of money uh, getting invested uh, in the space. And I think this is uh, probably the most uh, exciting time for a market like India. 
uh, you know, while on one side there has been, uh, you know, recession and, uh, you know, uh, the lockdown impacted uh, uh, GDP decline. Uh, but on the other side, uh, uh, there is there's something close to about 700, 800 million people who are now uh, on their mobile phone and doing things on their mobile phone that they that one could not have imagined 10 years back. So, you know, happy to be on this panel and explore all the opportunities that are, that are available. Thank you, Sunil. I think it's going to be uh, good to have uh, different stakeholders of the ecosystem. Uh, and and uh, to get started, uh, Prasad, I'm going to come, you, come to you first, right? Um, being you, being the, uh, the publisher. Now, pandemic, we all know, has made businesses relook and uh, publishers haven't been the ones who haven't been affected with it. So what have you guys, how have you guys relooked your business and realigned it or probably reinvented yourself your business models to uh, to the challenges we've got thrown up, and also, do you see uh, and how did you guys uh, tap into the opportunity which came along uh, education or or a video uh, the surge we have seen in those uh, two uh, two particular verticals? Oh. So I think uh, the biggest uh, sort of change that the pandemic has forced on us is uh, trying to look audience in rather than content out. I think publishers historically have always looked content out and that's been a failing with um, all newsrooms, uh, especially, uh, where, and, and publishers as a whole, right? Uh, so we've started looking audience in increasingly. The, the other, and what that has done as a domino effect is that it has forced us to uh, change a lot of our workflows. And I think those changes are for the better. Uh, the, what the pandemic, did was almost uh, pressurized businesses into doing this faster. Uh, we would have gotten there maybe over a 24 month framework, but we got to that space in let's say a six month framework. So that's, that's, that's been the real accelerant, right? And uh, especially with videos and educations, right? The two verticals you mentioned. So with education, I think now um, we are looking at expanding our offerings significantly. Uh, at the HD group, we've already got a platform for schools, which has now become a digital first platform where, of course, we are offering much more on the digital platform than we ever did on the print product. Uh, and on uh, videos, our play, I mean, traditionally where, with HD, you've been a print publisher where the focus has been on text we've been able to pivot a lot of that focus and therefore a lot of resourcing on videos. And, and uh, you know, most would appreciate that videos is extremely resource intensive, but we've been able to pivot. We've been able to create uh, new capabilities within the organization. And uh, it's, it's been difficult. It's, it's not been the easiest of journeys, but I think over the next uh, six to eight months is when we will see a lot of that come to fruition where uh, capability restructuring would actually result in great outcomes. Okay. Uh, interesting, Prasad, you mentioned audiences, and uh, I think that's been one of the uh, areas where there's a conscious movement by all publishers to look into it. And uh, of course, uh, there, there has been also a kind of a forced move, and the, the big, uh, the wall gardens also have been playing on that thing. Now, uh, staying with that particular thought of audience. Uh, I, I, you mentioned the role of uh, audience data, but is it there yet? Because uh, do you think all publishers are doing it? And then and, and, uh, uh, Prasad, this is for you and of course uh, to everyone on the panel because the audiences is something which is not necessarily unique to publisher. It touches everyone, whether it's a creator, uh, a fit for purpose creator for audiences, whether it's when you're doing the media planning, Tanmay, and of course, Sunil, when you're talking about a short form uh, enablement. The it's end of the day, we're all talking to audiences. So, uh, uh, Prasad, I would like to take your thoughts first and then go around the panel for hear what they think, how it's shaping up. So I think different publishers are at different uh, spaces or different uh, sort of uh, milestones or in the journey of understanding audiences. Uh, what I would say is that I think all publishers, or at least the top 20 publishers have significantly augmented their data gathering capabilities, uh, their data understanding. Most newsrooms now have uh, data engineering teams closely working with them. 
all and they have a bunch of tools which allows them to have daily weekly monthly reports right so we increasingly we're gathering the data are we reading that data well can we do better of course we can do better reading that data well i think it's not a not a trait that comes naturally to publishers but we're getting we're doing the right things we're focusing on the right things and and a lot of the decisions are becoming data driven and the, the, that data is influenced entirely by an audience in uh, outlook right so we're getting the right tools uh, we are, we've get, getting the right people uh, where i think publishers are at different stages is their ability to interpret that data and therefore act on that data yeah now uh, prasad when you mentioned about data it's great of course we also know there is a whole lot of responsibility that comes with it because of the pii and the gdpr things coming in but staying with the audiences uh, amit how do you think that the so much of a data driven approach has it started impacting uh, the creativity and and has it started stifling your ability to do the storytelling uh so yeah two questions uh, on yep. on this one so so of course so i prasad used the word audience in and and i think it's 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 the right approach it is the approach that we have, i think every brand for that matter should be using in uh it's always been the case i guess everyone tried to do the audience in thing that's why we we used to read what the audience uh, does you know where do they reside what do they do what are their interests and then create a communication and dole it out to them but the understanding of that audience was very very limited uh, we didn't have the avenues we didn't have the data uh, that we have now and now it is it does not stop anywhere it's it is continuous learning about exactly what the audience uh, is about and hence the understanding of this audience is getting richer by the day uh, the second part is when you get this data the other interesting part is how do we read the data and more than read the data how do you use the data so i think the important and interesting part and we are nowhere near uh, you know fruit we are absolutely completion there but i think it is about now devising the the content around what you have read understood about the uh, audience and give it out to them in a way that they'll consume it uh, better so uh, so i think it was there we used to do one single tvc one sim simple press ad basis our understanding of lakhs of people and everyone used to read the same thing now we can actually understand oh this is one cohort which which likes games which one co cohort likes something else and we can create different contents for them and be a lot more relevant to these guys now the second part of it is it is it encouraging or is it stifling it is doing both at the same time uh, you know it is it is stifling because you know you have to create hundreds thousands of content pieces it cannot be one single piece of communication created for lakhs and crores of people and and you're done and dust it not happening anymore uh, you have to be specific to these people only then you're being true to audience in right the second part is it's also very encouraging right uh, uh, it's also very very encouraging because uh, it gives avenues to do different things that's what creativity is about right uh, you want to do different things you want to try different things you want to reach people differently and and i think that's for a creative person it's uh, it's it's a mind field right which is an yep. interesting mind field so yeah so that's that's where it is uh, i mean that's interesting because you what you mentioned about uh, the evolution and and the emergence of different formats whether it's snackable content or vertical videos and so on and so forth now that while you are coming with whole formats to meet the screen's requirement and audience requirements i'm sure that puts up a huge challenge when someone like tanmay and his team has to look at the media efficiencies now tanmay from a media standpoint when the the two things right with multiple uh assets how are you trying to work on the efficiencies one two with the publishers really investing in audiences do you think the brands and i'm and, and 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 the media consultants or media agencies now open to look beyond the the men in blue and the men in the red the facebooks and youtubes because that's where being there uh the plus point or the position of strength so your thoughts 
uh, perfect uh, Vijay. I know oh, when I was listening to uh, Amit specifically, that came into mind. Okay, see uh, how a media agency looks at it. Media agency looks at it two ways. Agree? The, either the top of the funnel or lower part of the funnel, which is more performance, more commerce, more. That's how we are looking. We have been looking at it. With publishers like what Prasad was talking about, the data and the audience they co collecting now, given that where India is from that evolution point of view, where you don't have a single panel between TV and digital together still, it's become imperative for publishers to provide the data for the brands to plan for. Because without planning that who you are reaching, when you want to reach, how many frequencies you want to reach, you cannot invest the money. Or it's easier to invest in TV because there is something to do there. When you move into digital, at least in the top of the funnel, there has been quite, what I see in the market, quite a lot more publishers are open now to talk about sharing the data or using that data to help media agencies plan for their clients. Okay. The second part, which is what actually Amit was talking about, is the moments. The biggest problem is that we have been treating the way we plan and execute in TV the similar way in digital. Agree? That's not no more working. And what Amit was talking, and I think that's something we'll discuss, Ajit, the moment and the context at which the audience is in is when I want to deliver the message. That's what media agencies do. What is the best moment and how do you measure that? How do you report that is the moment. So our ability with data and the context that publishers provide, the biggest challenge still remains is that Yes, you can get the 500 million people who have been in, in internet two years back. Now it's at 800 million, which is almost as equal to TV. Agree? Who can you get at what moment and how do you measure becomes still an addressable problem for most of our clients. And the third part, which is probably we have been talking for some time and uh, when it connect, we generally talk about it, is that at then at what price you are delivering to your clients? What is the efficiency at which you are delivering that? And whether moving away from wall gardens and creating the sustainable media ecosystem out of wall gardens is a better thing? Yes, definitely. And that's how it should be. Now, interesting, you talked about two Cs and, and uh, moment marketing, right? The context, the content, and the moment. Now, uh, I have a question for you, Sunil. Uh, we have been seeing the trend uh, and emergence of e-commerce and brands moving away from, hey, the usual belief is we need to have three exposures before you can really get uh, your messaging down the funnel, but that has crunched to a single view, content to commerce in a single view, whether it's a video view or whatever session we're getting. How are you seeing uh, that the formats which are far more engaging, not only the, uh, the length of the asset, but how are you blending that with uh, the length of uh, the asset, the audiences on the platform, or uh, whichever publisher you're working with, and how are you layering that interactivity seamlessly? Right. So uh, a couple of a uh, uh, couple of points uh, that we, that one needs to remember. You know, the the audience uh, that that we are addressing right now is uh, uh, interacting with the content or consuming content, uh, more or less, or uh, ninety three percent of them, ninety four percent of them are consuming it on their uh, mobile phones. And uh, when they arrive at any of the publishers uh, uh, owned and operated assets, uh, they are coming from a swipeable medium. They're either coming in from social media or they are, you know, spent a lot, lot of time on a Tinder or a Reel or whatever you have out there. And from there, when they land up on the uh, on the publisher's page, more, you know, it's the text and image which is uh, which, which is where which is which doesn't engage. So, you know, what uh, what what we have been saying is. That uh, vertical full screen video uh, that is uh, that that makes it possible for uh, uh, the first part, which is keeping the audience engaged within your own and operated assets, and that's an important part. Uh, that gives a rich variety of data, a rich amount of data that you can that that you can really harness and harvest. Uh, you know, uh, and 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 just talking on the data part, it's a lot of times uh, you know we people from the technology media side want to tie data up and beat it up and extract a confession out of data, which is more or less what we want to hear. But uh, uh, the fact of the matter remains that, uh, you know, things like personalization, things like, uh, uh, you know, uh, things, uh, if, if a publisher is going into the paywall side of uh, side of the business, then what is it that you're providing? What's the kind of content? And what Amit said and Tanmay said is absolutely right. These are, uh, 
these are points that uh, that that need to be addressed now you know coming to the point where vertical videos and interactivity on part of vertical videos i think uh, uh, what is happening is uh, with live stream commerce uh, that started in china and now is becoming big in the western markets and is is already uh, here in india that gives an opportunity for brand and publishers both to directly talk to the uh, audience which is outside of the world garden because for the last 10 years the world gardens have kind of suffocated the publishers uh, from uh, zero data to uh, basically uh, throttling uh, you know whatever is possible uh, as a, as a as a uh, equal exchange amongst peers but here there is a possibility of you to be able to talk to the audience sell get into e-commerce and that is something which is uh, uh, beginning to show a lot of promise in india uh, in other parts of the world uh, uh, i i think uh, they they are they are a little ahead of of the curve so you know uh, let let me stop here in terms of saying that uh, vertical video swipeable video shoppable video is something which is far more engaging and uh, uh, we are seeing enough amount of traction in terms of the sales that are happening out there the engagement that's happening I mean, the engagement that is not possible on on a, on a banner, which is a static banner, where it will be less than three or four seconds that you spend. Here, people are spending multiple video views, uh, thirty second videos, uh, you know, eight to nine videos in one session, and that's a lot of data and a lot of uh, uh, traction that you're getting out there. Yeah. Now, uh, so you just made a very interesting point there, with uh, and it's all, we all know. The, uh, India is mobile first market. It's it's almost an extended organ of humans, uh, all of us, and uh, and of course it's a huge space and and lean into that with data and, and interactive formats, coupled with the huge uh, uh, user base or the consumers we have online. Now, this is where I uh, wanted to come back to you, Tanmay. Do you see online video, which we see in a surge across different aspects of online video? I'm just talking about video. I am not going down to say, hey, OTT or CTV. I'm just saying video as a, as a. Do you see it's arrived where it's it's bigger than TV? Because some of the consumers you find there may no longer be available on a traditional appointed viewing or traditional linear TV. That's one. If yes, do you think India is right up there? Or what? what's the landscape and how that could really start helping uh, a traditional publishers to uh, harness this switch? Uh, towards uh, a planning approach. Perfect. So, uh, how? Okay, let, let's look at the adex. How it has moved in last two <laughs> three years. That will give us a fair bit of context. Okay. See, right now digital is hovering around thirty five plus percent in the okay. market. Okay. If you take everything that uh, total adex, out of which what we see is that probably. Video advertising, leave YouTube and Facebook. I'm leaving them out of this discussion because yep. they are. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just the programmatic video spending is almost 30% of the total spend that now happens in the market. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if that's a quite a lot when I compare that and divide that between multiple OTTs and not just mm -hmm. saying that the biggest probably Netflix or Amazon are still not up monetizing the way they should be, but rest everybody. And if you really look at it, and that's the most important point, how I look at it, most of the free ABODs are still doing very well when it comes to monetization. Who are not, where we are not able to monetize and where we are not able to support them is when we don't get enough measurement from those platforms. But almost eight, eight and a half percent of total ADEX going to online video advertising out of TV and everything left together is a big amount of money. Plus, if you see last two years, it's almost jumping 200 percent year on year, the spend. Okay. That's that growth is where it is going to be. I think after e-commerce, that's the second largest growing part of the ADEX. Hmm. Well, now, sorry, go ahead. Vijay, Vijay, can I, can I just uh, jump yep. in? Sorry, uh, Tanmay uh, spoke uh, a very important part. I mean, programmatic video uh, is growing in leaps and bounds, and that's something that's a, that's an easy uh, opportunity which is there for monetizing the videos. But there are aspects of video which a publisher uh, has to look at, which is not uh, uh, there only uh, as uh, as a programmatic pipe that is coming in and you know matching the supply and demand. Uh, 
what's made available right now is and, and a lot of publishers that i talk to in india are are thinking in in, in those lines and maybe prasad can also uh, you know enlighten us about that is is looking at video from the point of view of uh, of, uh, of of purely editorial content or branded content you know uh, every including hd uh, a, you know has got a brand solutions team and all of them are uh, a, you know not utilizing videos at the moment the way it would be it's, it's only dependent upon programmatic i think the opportunity on video for publishers is uh, is three four times what it what is what is currently being seen because that branded solutions which used to be text and images to for a very long time or a publication that is putting together uh, a very engaging webinar uh, or or a festival on a, on jewelry you know things like uh, Condé Nast and the others who do that all of them now uh, make it possible to have a real engagement and real sale if you want that to go that far uh, using using videos. I think that part is something that somehow gets discounted when uh, uh, when when we talk about video. It is measurable. Tanmay will be very happy uh, to say that that's that's measurable. Uh, there are there are very clear monetization mechanisms out there. So I think that needs to be really looked at. So in in true sense, uh, from where we are today, from programmatic video to maybe three or four times that uh, is what the potential is if you open it up entirely. Yeah, so Sunil, I think you seem to have read my mind. Uh, because that's something I was trying to put up to Prasad. And uh, now, Prasad, I think we, uh, as you know, uh, it, it's we have seen uh, video really, you uh, know, being a growth catalyst across the uh, last eighteen months. Now, uh, from coming from a pure digital uh, publication traditional, and having a host of real estate like Live Mail, Hindustan Times, Desi Martini, and of course, uh, I did see. Uh, uh, the OTT play, which is about the uh, the uh, recommendation. I do see uh, HD trying to, but how are you really uh, marrying video and making your content more snackable, if I have to use that term, because videos are short forms like uh, Sunil uh, company facilitates is helping them to create that snackable content. What is, uh, what's the HD's thought there? Uh, how are you really tapping onto this to, for the next growth? And, and, and do you see as a next growth? That's the other question, not that we want to force you on something believing in that. So, uh, okay, let me, let me answer this two ways. Hmm. Uh, we are trying to make all our content more snackable, not just videos, hmm. because we see the, that, that trend exist across formats it is to do with attention spans more than anything else so it's not format specific on the snackable part of it right on the videos part of it while we experiment with different formats for us uh, i think the last 18 odd months has been a transformation in capability building where we've built up our capabilities significantly in generating video content or being able to think video first with a lot of the content uh, to uh, to uh, you know sunil's point where uh, do we do we still think in the very conventional framework of uh, brand studio or branded content or just editorial videos sure because i think that's that's i mean you go to your comfort area first right uh, it's it's like mcdonald's doing burger five kinds of burgers first before uh, trying to put a biryani on their menu. So, so it's effectively that, right? And uh, I think monetization formats, we, all publishers are looking at. And, and very frankly, I think most publishers are scratching their heads on monetization formats because a lot of the monetization currently comes from the walled gardens where you have little or no control over the monetization. And uh, your ability to invest in videos significantly goes up if you can monetize uh, the same content uh, in four or five ways, which we've been able to do with, with, with our other formats, but with videos, it's been a bit of a grind, very honestly. So uh, are there capabilities that exist, for example, to uh, you know, make sales? Sure, there are, but uh, it, it is a marriage that has been uncomfortable or that has proved uncomfortable so far for not just Hindustan Times, but with most publishers. Uh, but I see some making uh, more rapid strides than others in trying to close that gap and in coming out with, um, you know, platforms that allow you to do that, which is slightly 
uh, perhaps outside the traditional boundaries of an editorial framework for content. Now, uh, it's interesting, Prasad, you made a, a point there about monetization because that's, that's show me the color of money. It is always going to be important for all of us and also talk about uh, different formats. Now, uh, we last year, uh, we did a, a survey with Canta to understand how consumers perceive uh, a branding communication in a premium professional content as compared to a non-professional. And it, it was obvious that people have a far more trust. The brand uh, uplifts and recalls are higher in a premium placed in a premium environment. When it's monetization, it also tends to have an effective communication because end of the day, uh, it's how you communicate that. And that brings me back, I mean, back to you. Monetization. Creativity, six second, 15, 30, 45, right? And then and, and I have to throw in with the screens, further throw in the interactivity. How do you see that? And cool. it has to, and, and of course, the growing programmatic pipes, the programmatic. So, yeah. So, so, so it's complex uh, to, to answer it shortly, but, but uh, the, the reality is, uh, so first of all, I think why video? Uh, and because we've been talking video, I think video is a win-win, is a right? Video is a win-win because for an audience, that is the most engrossing. You are seeing it, you are hearing it, and I am far more engrossed in, in, in it. Similarly, it is a win-win for a brand to be in a video because what you can communicate through visual and audio together is a lot more than what you can communicate it through just an audio medium or just a static medium. So hence, I think videos are, are, are a gold mine as far as communication is concerned, as far as audiences are concerned. So hence, video is, is the big deal. But, you know, usually what we do is when we, when we talk about uh, digital as a medium we we there is one brush stroke Achha, we want to go digital but the digital medium is so diverse unlike say a tv or 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 a print or or any of the other medium it's so diverse that you know there is a six seconder there is a uh, 30 seconder also there is a seven minuter also there is of course the the ott of 30 minuters and to, to, to long formats. So, so if you, if you just look at the whole diversity of digital, I think it's, it's, it is complicated. It is complex, but that's the beauty of it. Uh, but what, what digital has done on the traditional medium is also very interesting. So traditional medium is not gone. It's not dead. So TV and print and all is absolutely there. What, what it does is it puts a lot of pressure, which is a good thing, a lot of onus because I am taking, I, now I'm putting a certain amount of money on TV and, and print, this better work because, because this is, you know, there is an alternate medium there, which is actually giving you more measurability and everything. And hence what we are now putting it on TV and, and print is, is a lot more research, a lot more sure, you know, you, you put, the, put it out there. When it comes to digital, it is a, it is it is complex, but it's also a play field. Digital is the medium where you can actually fail and fail fast, and then come back again with something else and hit it out of the park with the next one. Uh, and and I think yes, it does get complicated. Like I said, you know, uh, you know, there is a six seconder rule, there is a thirty seconder rule. There are there are enough and more rules. Possibly, I don't know all the rules also by now. And, and as we move along, there are some new rules being formed there, but, but that's the interesting part. I think we, creative is about doing new things and this, this medium just gives you the opportunity to do new things. No, that, that's nice because uh, what you said, it's uh, uh, the existence of these mediums in silos is no longer there. And, and as I said, it's, uh, uh, it's not an, uh, digital is not an afterthought, it's become more integral and more seamless uh, thing. And, and you're right, you said it's complex. But uh, Tanmay, you alluded to it, and in fact, Sunil also alluded to it earlier about the uh, video being programmatic uh, enablement, and then more and more buys happening programmatically. Now, having said that, do you really see there, because we, there's a constant feedback or, or what we hear is, hey, there's no enough premium inventory. Uh, is that a reality? Uh, do you think there's a lack of premium inventory? Or it's, it's that probably we are 
not necessarily seeing everything coming through the programmatic pipes because there is the uh, the reservation bias or IOS bias still prevalent. So this, uh, Tanmay, for you and, and Sunil, I would, would love to hear your three points on this as well. So you, you're right, Vijay. So if you see uh, from a premium content point of view, I'm not going to talk about premium. Uh, yeah. The premium content is for most brands is brand set. So it's easier to take that decision to associate it with it. Yeah. Like the uh, TV, uh, whether you talk at sports or talk about some of the th big events like Big Boss. The biggest problem that happens in digital is that most, uh, most times we don't have enough data to plan for it. Okay. Agree. Whether you talk about mobile phone, like Sunil was talking about, or connected TVs you are talking about, and who is watching, when they are watching it. So definitely the biggest challenge, and you are correct in saying that, is able, the premium content able to drive the amount of advertising or media money or advertising money behind it. But over a period of time, I think a lot more clients now open, and we have been discussing that is that open to at least associate in that content may not be through advertisement maybe through uh, some way of connecting with that content or being associated with the content the bigger problem is that dissemination of the content without a platform owner whether it is ht or other otts okay mm -hmm. the dissemination becomes a bigger problem for us still and mm -hmm. what most clients still struggling with is the legacy thought of how they associate that in TV and not in digital. It's easy to put a Facebook post and promote it. Agree? Get shares and likes. It talks quite a lot about a kind of creativity of it. But when it comes to content, uh, that is the part which goes missing still. Yeah. Uh, Sunil, your thoughts? Uh, any, anything, anything you would like to add here? I think uh, uh, Tanmay's point about brand safety is uh, is 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 very important. But that's that's probably the reason why uh, you know short format platforms, which are uh, more or less walled gardens, are finding it difficult in terms of uh, you know monetization. There is monetization happening, but that's happening in uh, in bursts, uh, in in small pack sizes, uh, if you might use that term. Now, with the publishers in particular, I mean, uh, it's it's one of those opportunities which is. Uh, impossible to ignore and uh, let's say, I mean, they own the content, they have uh, the moderation capability, which no OTD or no user generated content uh, platform can have. Uh, imagine a HD uh, putting out videos out there uh, in the short format and live stream and all of that, which is completely moderated by people who are experts in the field and then being able to monetize it in, in whichever way. I think that level, that, that whole, uh, you know, bogeyman that has been created of uh, user-generated content running away with the story is, is just that. I mean, it's not something which is, uh, which, uh, uh, which what, I mean, it's democratization of content and all that is good to hear uh, in, in terms of, uh, in, in large articles that, uh, uh, you know, and that a VC might put out or, or an editorial piece in the New York Times. So the reality is that brands don't want to put content on user-generated uh, content. And therein is the, uh, opportunity that publishers have in terms of taking the lead and uh, providing that content that uh, that the consumers will have. I mean, what we need to remember is uh, consumers have got uh, attention deficit, uh, you know, problems right now. You know, we, we, we humans have reached the point where we were the attention span of a goldfish, uh, which is probably 15 seconds. So you need to rethink in terms of what you're telling out there in 15 to 30 seconds, because we on the platform see a major drop after the 22nd second, uh, you know, 30 second video, 20 seconds, uh, 22 seconds later, uh, the drop is steep. So storytelling, I mean, and, and uh, you know, the, the excuse that is said, you can't tell a story in 30, uh, in 30 seconds. Of course, you can tell a story in 30 seconds. Amit's uh, uh, entire agency has been doing it for the last 40 years, creating 30 second TV series and selling everything from chocolates to cars. So it's it's really a, a, a relook at that mindset and opening yourself up to uh, the ability. And uh, that's something I, I think it's going to be more collaborative with platform providers like us and the publishers talking to each other more often and the publishers uh, opening up their minds to accepting the fact that uh, maybe we know something a uh, little more than what they've been doing traditionally. Yeah, no, uh, it, it was good you mentioned about the 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 popular thought, hey, human memory is about goldfish because 
we've all seen it's not necessarily true. And then, uh, as I said, each uh, asset lens has its own KPI, it works, and, and, and different emotions can be evoked through that. Uh, Tanmay, I'm just going to come to you because there is something, while, while we spoke about video and then we've seen the growth, unfortunately, there is this thing, and we're seeing uh, the, uh, no, the, uh, the walls getting away from different mediums, print or, uh, or TV or a radio or electronic. However, within online video, there seems to be a, a kind of a boundaries of walls creeping up in terms of oh, OTT, CTV, online video in stream, out stream, some are important. Why are we not looking at video asset and asset? And then we all talking about audiences. We are talking about Amit spoke about how beautifully that different assets, different screens gives them an ability to and flexibility to communicate that story. However, when it comes down to brand, when it comes to the planning, it comes down to, oh, I only want OTT. That's a flavor because everyone wants to be OTT. Let's be OTT. Let's be CTV. The reality is if it's a, if the medium is video, why we are not looking at video and suddenly start dropping some of the other formats, or other touch points as a uh, hot potatoes? Uh, I think, uh, Vijay, the problem is in actually three parts. Okay. The first part, and that's most of the clients struggle with, is that when, and I was talking about it, is that how do I assess the efficacy of some of these mediums and how do we measure constantly that and improve on it? Okay. That's a system, I think, uh, the legacy have not taught us how to do that in TV. The second part, and this is where the problem starts coming in when it comes to mostly brands trying to solve their problems. They see that most of the long-term or big content creation that happens in the market by every type of video. I'm not just talking OTD, like you said. Okay, There seems to be gone missing is the content it's free and content. I need to associate with through my advertisement, through my communication, through my message. And that publishers are not communicating enough to media agencies or brands. And the third and the largest problem of all of this is that client still wants to look at how do I plan for the people I can reach. There is no way in this country still that we, we can't plan for that. If you can't plan for that, most clients are not ready to put the money, agree? Because if you can't, I know it works well. I, um, my client knows it works well, but how do you plan for it? And that's the part, thing that I think publishers have to come together to solve for. So Tanmay, if, if I take two things, right? Transparency and measurement will help yeah. that way. I'm going to grow across to uh, publisher on the panel here, Prasad, all right? I have some of the questions I've been asking purely based off my earlier experience as a publisher. Now, when a brand, there's a money on the table, creative are helping, but the question is transparency and measurement, right? And some, and then of course we've seen, I think we have just about one minute, so I'll just rush to you. Uh, so while we do this, uh, have we seen the publisher still focus taking, uh, am I getting an echo? Uh, uh, so publishers, are not, they prefer uh, reserved buys, IO buys, not necessarily uh, embracing programmatic. Now, programmatic brings that transparency, the data uh, benefit, and also uh, the solutions like header billing, because when you're giving header billing, you're not doing a waterfall, you're giving everyone a fair chance. And in the process, you're increasing the yield and the value of your inventory and the real estate. But where do you think is that missing piece or the missing link and how do you see that moving forward? I think very quickly because we are out of time uh, yeah. within, within programmatic right uh, you will see more and more publishers embrace header bidding I mean <laughs> it's already hap ha happened with the big pub bigger publishers you will see that trickle down effect very very soon uh, where it hasn't happened but within I think the header bidding module or even within the overall programmatic piece I think there needs to be a certain segmentation or call it preferred or privileged programmatic if you want to, where uh, the, the sales teams of the publishers are able to offer that to clients in a, in a more meaningful manner where publishers can themselves track uh, the, the output, uh, the outcomes can be tracked uh, by an agency or a media planner, the outcomes can be tracked by a client. And I think that makes it more meaningful with a lot of the programmatic 
uh, panels, what happens is uh, data collection is not systematic or unified still. And because of the whole lot of democratization, I think flaws are driven down consistently and we have to work on uh, getting some sort of uh, equilibrium between various categories of programmatic or create more subclasses within that. Great. Uh, thank you, Prasad. I think uh, we just over the time, but uh, just to you know, uh, thank you gentlemen for a very uh, engaging conversation. I think we would have loved to carry on. and. Also, while we've seen uh, it was more skewed towards video predominantly because that's something which we have seen uh, has been growing. E-commerce, edutech has been, but again, edutech has gone uh, the video. Uh, and, and it's interesting, we ask kids to stay away from the video, but now they are on that screen consuming their uh, education. But some of the takeaways, if I have to kind of sum up, uh, as, as uh, Prasad said, the audience is, is the move forward the embracing programmatic or more importantly, the solutions like a meeting, which helps uh, to address some of the questions that we brought about measurement, transparency, uh, would do. And again, while the what we see in the, uh, the, the so-called silos getting uh, demolished and the, the change or, or move away, away from the traditional uh, creative content to the digital, it's actually seamlessly integrating and then the digital being an opportunity to, to be experimenting. Uh, and uh, along with that has been emergence of a paywall which Sunil alluded to. Unfortunately, we could not dwell deep on that. But the fact is, uh, there is uh, a, a quite a clear signs of growth factors have this. Has, and then this is not necessarily uh, seasonal in nature. What we see is this is, has become a habit and this will continue to grow. And this could be an opportunity. And as we move forward, we'll see, start seeing further diversification and helping this grow further. But thank you, gentlemen, once again uh, uh, for your views and uh, uh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks so thank much. You. Thank you all.